loved us so much, the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't know that we can sing a song like that about his agape love where he laid down his life for us without letting him know. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Valentine, by the way, that was 14th of Feb. It was 269 AD that Valentine, who was a believer, he was uh, imprisoned for his Christian beliefs and uh, God worked through Valentine to heal people. And uh, just before he was uh, put to death on the 14th of Feb, 269 AD, uh, he, he prayed for the jailer's daughter who was blind to be healed. And he left her a little note signed from your Valentine. And uh, after his death, she read that note and she could see. Isn't that a good story? And I hope someone, I hope someone gave you a blessing on Valentine's Day, a, a rose or a card or some of you had chocolate. I can see that. That's what's been going down here. Good to be in the house this morning. Good to be in the house. Move around, greet as many people as you can all around the building this morning in Jesus' name. Please be seated, church. Just one word, and he can change you all together. Good to be here this morning. Great to have you here. And Helen, remind you of a few things that are coming up in the life of our church. Connect groups are back. No perfect people allowed is the title of the study that we're doing. Of course, there are none anyway. And uh, just come as you are. That's how it is. And let God do the changing, just one word. And he'll change you. And the 16th of March, men, Mr. Jack Austin is sitting over here. He'll be seated in the foyer after the service behind a table, a black table. He'll be sitting on a beige chair. He'll have a pen and he'll have a clipboard. Men, he will take you four bucks and he will take your name. And you can come to the men's event on the 16th of March. We have a speaker and we have coffee, all right, and some other stuff. Stuff and thing, men's thing, bloke's thing, that's what it is. And the 30th of March, I'm praying just for a beautiful, mild, sunny day. And I'm praying that everyone that calls this church their spiritual home will be here for a little while. We just want to... Get this place looking so good. And I, I just want to hang with you. I, I want to have morning tea with you on Saturday the 30th of March. A date with Gordon. Let's call it that. Come and have a cake with me, all right? That's what we're going to do. Loyalty is our topic this morning. And that will be our topic next Sunday morning too. We're getting a little bit deeper. Proverbs uh, chapter 19, verse 22 in your New Living Translation, says loyalty makes a person attractive. I think that's, that, that's, that's like a Valentine's verse right there because I've got in front of me a bunch of attractive people this morning. You're looking good, people, and I want to talk to you people about loyalty. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Loyalty makes you look good. Loyalty doesn't only make you look good, loyalty makes you attractive. Not just looking that way, but you just are. The other side of the coin, of course, is disloyalty, and disloyalty makes you look unattractive, kind of on the ugly side, you know. Disloyalty makes you look that way because integrity and dependability have gone on a holiday from your life. But loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. When you have loyalty, it's like when you buy your very best set of clothes, you know that it looks good on you. 
and you want to wear it out there and everyone else knows it looks good on you. You have a little bit of a look in the mirror and say, I'm looking good today. Well, loyalty makes you look good like a best set of clothes. Job 28. Job, the value of loyalty. Job 28, verse 15 to 16. It cannot be bought with gold. It cannot be purchased with silver. It's worth more than all the gold of Ophir, greater than precious onyx or lapsus lazuli. Back on uh, Sunday the 27th of January, I I preached a a message that kind of intersected with Australia Day and uh, the, the message was titled The Great South Land of the Holy Spirit. And I mentioned a, a song written by former Hillsong songwriter Jeff Bullock with the same title, The Great South Land of the Holy Spirit. And I quoted a line from that song, and, and it's, it, here it is. Her great, speaking of Australia, her greatest harvest is in her people. And, and I, I think that's, that's true of the church, of the living God. Uh, the greatest harvest is in the people. I, I spent, I've devoted my life to this church. I, I, I have given, I spend my life ministering in this church, for this church, and to this church, Spires Life Church. And the greatest harvest is in her peoples. In this church, the gold is in the people. The gold is in the people and and their loyalty. Loyalty is such a value. Now, businesses know that. Uh, And and so I I, I have a flyby. How many got a flyby's card? Yeah, how many ever look at it and, I don't know what you do with it, but occasionally you buy something. We bought an electric iron with ours once. Flyby's card. And, And I have a dome card. You got a dome card? I, I, I have a Jamaica blue card. They're more loyal than I am. I'll go from one to the other. They say they're called loyalty cards. That, that's why they, they, they give them to you. How many remember uh, the, the great Australian airline of yesteryear uh, called Ansett Airlines? How, how many remember that? You do. They, they, used to do. they used to do mystery flights, by the way. And you didn't know where you were going unless you knew someone that worked at the airline. I, Lara and I did a mystery flight to Brisbane. My daughter worked at the airline at the time. <laughs> uh, in my previous church, I took myself and two staff to Broome on a mystery flight because my PA at the church worked for her and said after she left, I stopped paying out and she did me a deal. In the late 1990s, in New Zealand, uh, bought out Ansett Airlines, and uh, and I, I don't who knows why, but under Air New Zealand, it it was never profitable. It just didn't prosper, and, and so in the early hours of the 14th of September 2001, in the middle of the, the night, administrators determined that Ansett was not viable and would not continue its operations, and flights were already in the air going somewhere. And so they determined that, well, they couldn't stop them and pull them back, so they're just going to fly to wherever they're going. And anyone on board, when they landed, there'd be a person there to say, to you need to make other arrangements if you're ever going to go back home again. Two people, two passengers that I know so very well were in the air at that time. Their names are Gordon and Lara. <laughs> and upon landing in Brisbane, the Ansett people came and got them, and they said, we'll make other arrangements for you to get back to Perth. And, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I had an Ansett loyalty card with thousands of bonus points on it. So what am I going to do with those bonus points? Well, I need to tell you this. Although the company was broke, they honoured the bonus points. And they did it this way. They got us a flight back to Perth with Qantas. And strangely enough, they booked us into a hotel in Perth. We, we actually live here. You know what I'm saying? And they gave us a, a freebie in a hotel in Perth, or well, what were we to do? We just got home a day later and stayed in Perth in the hotel, and, had, and breakfast was included, right? Loyalty, loyalty card. Loyalty is attractive, and it makes you look attractive. 
Loyalty makes you look so good, whereas disloyalty does not make you look good at all. Role models, role models in loyalty, perhaps in our nation, are, 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 have gone missing. There are none. There are not very many at all. And I have a question for you. It's a little bit like the question, how many prime ministers does it take to change a light bulb? It's like that, but it's not that question. That's not the question at all, but it's a bit like that. It's how many prime ministers has this nation had since 2007? Well, in 2007, John Howard was the Prime Minister and uh, Kevin Rudd was going for it with the elections at the end of that year. And uh, he, had a, he, had a, he had a little slogan, Kevin for 07. And uh, the people that were barracking for him, they wore T-shirts, Kevin 07. And uh, fair enough, he, he got voted in in 07. Only a little while later to get the shunt with no ceremony by Julia Gillard. We're up to three prime ministers already, you see. Only to get the shunt, Julia Gillard, by the man that she'd shunted out, he got shunted back in again. So I'm saying there's no role models for loyalty because if you're prime minister, you may not have the job next week if you've got to watch your back. And then, of course, Kevin Rudd got ousted by Tony Abbott. He, uh, by, he got voted in. There was no skullduggery here, just, he just uh, went to the elections and, and he got voted in. Uh, but then unceremoniously he got dumped by, by Malcolm Turnbull. You following me here? And then he got voted back in, but then he got unceremoniously dumped last year by a whole bunch of them in his party and, and they threw it up in the end. They said, who's going to grab the bunch of flowers? And it was Scott Morrison. And, and so my question wasn't about changing a, a light bulb at all. It was how many prime ministers since 2007? And, and the answer is six, but some of them had a, two cracks at it. In, out, shunted, back in. You know. I'm telling you this because there's no role models for, lo ro no role models for loyalty right there. None at all. Sporting clubs, sporting clubs are not much better. It's not as if you say, well, I, 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 I'm going to give my heart and soul and my loyalty to this sporting club at all. You go where you get the best financial deal. Loyalty. Jesus said, a kingdom and a house divided cannot stand. Mark 3, 24 and 25, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house, what? Cannot stand. Proverbs 20, verse 28, in the Amplified, loyalty and mercy, truth and faithfulness protect the king, and he upholds his throne by loving kindness. A, a leader is only as good as the loyalty of his people and his troops. Yeah? Which brings me to playgroup. We started a playgroup last year in, in uh, term three, just when they closed Ingram Road down, so it was quite a, a hardship really to get it going. I used to go and meet them in Sahara Road, ladies come in and help them with their prams and bring them through the mud and get them in here. And so we, we went as And then we started again on the 5th of February this year. Uh, Rowena did such a good job in, in a, building a platform and Emma took it over and Emma went for it on the 5th and we had a bunch of uh, new bums and little people coming on in and uh, Emma came over and visited us in the office after the first go and I go, well, how to go? And she told me and I said, that's just so well done, Emma. And she said, well, I couldn't have done it without my team. the team had their loyalty to me and I had my loyalty to the team. I couldn't have done it without the team. Had a second one on Tuesday just gone. Another four new ones came. You people get excited at all? Because you, you can. <laughs> on Friday we celebrated the uh, second kids club for the year. We only just launched that. Been on two Fridays now and uh, Charlene is running that, 
I'm just looking for a text message here that I got yesterday morning. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I got a phone call from Charlene last Saturday morning and she uh, had done the thing and she wondered how it was all going and she wanted to debrief with, with the senior pastor. We had quite a chat and then last Sunday morning we had a coffee and we had a further debrief and, and a chat and like there were 22 people, 22 kids, first one up. If you're in business, you go, man, that is a winner. And then you say, if you're running the business, if only we can do it again next week. And they did. And so I texted Charlene yesterday. Good morning, Charlene. Just touching base with you, Read Kids Club. It all go well with a little bit of tweaking. <laughs> you got to tweak. Hey, Pastor Gordon, last night went in, in, in capitals, in bold print, incredibly awesome. Everything ran smoothly, even with two volunteers missing. One had the cheek to go to holiday to New Zealand, would you believe that? <laughs> but we also had the beautiful young Emma. That would be the same Emma that is in the playgroup. The beautiful young Emma coming out to help. The team works so well, Pastor Gordon. These young volunteers are so passionate and awesome and amazing. We had 19 kids. Uh, the Lord is just so mind-blowing. I am in awe with what he is doing. Don't you like to get that kind of thing on a Saturday morning? What's going on there, what I'm talking about is loyalty. And whether it's Emma with her crew at Playgroup Tuesday morning or Charlene with her crew, uh, some apparently which are the Playgroup crew by the looks of it, and, and uh, on Friday evening, it's the teamwork and the loyalty. Well done, Emma. And she said, I couldn't have done it without the team. Every Sunday, we put on this service. Every Sunday. We put another one on Sunday night. And my fellow pastors, doesn't matter what brand they are, we all, these days we don't really care about brands anymore. Uh, we, we all swap notes and, and they act like I'm doing it all. Every Sunday morning, uh, we have like, like volunteers, 27 or 28 volunteers that are rostered on to make this happen. Every Sunday morning. And then Sunday night, we do it again. We have 16 or 17 volunteers Sunday night. It's a team. And, and, and the team are so loyal, not just to me, but to the pattern uh, that we have prescribed in order to do church. And I want to be as loyal as God gives me the ability to be back to the team. So Pastor Lee, this morning, he, he does, we have a Kids Connect group running. So he goes out after the care cards. And I had him on the roster to do the offering talk. But I'd had that chat with him and we had a little bit of a joke. I said I'd get his wife to do it. And he said, best of British luck with that. And so... <laughs> so... Uh, uh, I said, well, I'd do it. Well, then Pamela noticed on the run sheet that, that Lee had gone out, so she came down and visited with me. Lee's gone. I go, yeah, no, I've asked Karen, and she said, no, so I'm doing it. Now. <laughs> That's loyalty We're right there, looking out for one another. Uh, loyalty is never one-sided. It, it, it's two-sided. Uh, support the captain, but the captain needs to support you. Uh, in, in 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 11, verses 15 to 19, uh, it, there's, there's the story about David, who was not king at the time. Saul was still king. And David is under attack by the Philistines, the other enemy in, in the area. And uh, he's holed up in a, a cave called the Stronghold. And he's there with his loyal troops. And he just makes us... He just says, he said, you know, man, it's hot and dry out here. I'm so thirsty. He said, I, I, was, I was brought up in the Bethlehem area. And there's, just the, the, there's a well just outside the gate of Bethlehem and the water from that well is so sweet. Man, what would I give to have a jug of water from that well? He just said like that. And so the three, three of his strong men, they go, we're going to get him the water. They broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from, they took their jug, from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David. They broke through the army lines, and but David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. He said, God forbid that I should drink this. 
He said, should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives because they risked their lives to bring it back to me? David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of his mighty men. David's men are a picture of loyalty. If the boss wants water, we're going to get him the water. If he wants it from the, the well of Bethlehem, we're going to go to the well of Bethlehem. There's enemies out there, doesn't matter, we'll, we'll get through. We'll come on back, we'll come on back. Take, take a, a look when you've got a, a spare time and read the uh, book of Hosea. It's you, what you've got in your Old Testament, you've got history books and you've got uh, like Proverbs and Psalms and Ecclesiastes, which are wisdom books, and then you've got like what they call the, the major prophets. They, they, they wrote big books like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And then the latter part of your New Testament, they're the minor prophets, they wrote smaller books. One of them is Hosea. Hosea was a very loyal man, loyal to his wife, and her name was Goma. So there you go. That's, that's a test right there, having a name like that, Goma. And, and he was loyal to her, but she was not loyal back to him at all. That's what the whole book's about. Hosea 6 and uh, verse 4, uh, and, and the Lord says to Goma, your loyalty is like the morning cloud and like the dew that disappears and goes away early. Friday, Friday. Wasn't it cool Friday? We had fog at our place. Those of you who live uh, west of the of, of the Great Divide, not the West Coast, let's not call it that. We're all, you know. You, those of you who live over Warnborough, Port Kennedy Way, you had fog. I saw you post pictures of it. Here's what I noticed about the fog. By mid-morning, it was gone. The sun came out and it went. And so what the Lord is saying, he said, your loyalty is like that. <laughs> you may have had loyalty first thing in the morning, but by mid-morning, gone. Not a trace of it left. Huh. Ruth, on the other hand, book of Ruth, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a story of loyalty. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. Uh, uh, and Ruth says to her mother-in-law, where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. You're not getting rid of me. I'm staying with you. I'm loyal to you all the days of my life. Loyalty is loyalty is loyalty is loyalty. Loyalty is demonstrated, and loyalty is verbalized. Loyalty versus disloyalty. Many years ago, uh, Bob Dylan, yeah, Bob Dylan, the, uh, you know, the singer, songwriter, uh, he, he sang a song. I don't know whether he wrote it or not. It's actually called Positively Fourth Street, but you'll see it on there. That's a misspelling there. It's not Fourth Street. It's Fourth Street. There's the song. And, and the, the, you look at this. This is just one of the verses. Bob's been having a bad day with a friend of his who has let him down. Bob has got a disloyal friend, and he wrote a song about it. You've got a lot of nerve to say you are my friend. You just want to be on the side that's winning. You've got a lot of nerve to say you are my friend. When I was down, you just stood there grinning. I don't think Bob likes that guy anymore. I don't, I don't think he does. Bob's had a bad day with a disloyal friend. Sometimes you have a bad day with disloyal friends, don't you? You know what I'm talking about. You can't count on them. Just when you thought you could count them, they're gone, man. They're gone down the road. Proverbs 17, verse 17 in your NLT. A friend is what? Always loyal. Uh, 1 Chronicles 29, 24 in your NLT. All the officials, the warriors, and the sons of King David, what? Pledge their loyalty to King Solomon. Loyalty to leaders, loyalty to God. Loyalty to God. Uh, 2 Chronicles 15, 14, NLT. I love this. I lo they shouted their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and ram's horns sounding. I'm having a meeting with Pamela later on about getting some uh, musical accompaniment, and I suggest we get some trumpets. And some ram's horns. And then find someone that can really bring some music out of those. Yeah, ram's horns sounding. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then... I, I love this, I love this, I love this. I love this so much that I'm getting into this next Sunday about loyalty because loyalty has a reward. Some years ago in this church, we did a series of studies with uh, by John Bevere 
called Honor's Reward. I want to say to you, and I, this is next week's message, so just a little bit here, they're locked in together, honour and loyalty. And if honour has a reward, and it does, dishonour has uh, and the negative of that, loyalty has a reward. Uh, loyalty brings a blessing. So never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find what? Favour with both God and people, and you'll earn a, a good reputation. A secret, not the secret, but a secret to the abundant life. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. A secret to the abundant life is right loyalties. Because sometimes you can be loyal to the totally wrong things and the wrong people. And that's not going to serve you well. A key uh, to the abundant life is right loyalties. Favor flows from right loyalties. Proverbs 18, 22 in the NLT. A man who finds a wife. I was thinking about this last, on the 14th, whenever that was. Yeah, Thursday. Uh, and uh, Well, I read this and it made me do something, buy something on the way home, really. And... Uh, a man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives what? Favor from the Lord. The Amplified says, he who finds a true and faithful wife finds a good thing and obtains favor and approval from the Lord. True and faithful equals loyal, by the way. That, that's what that is. I, I just want to give a testimony here today and embarrass my wife, I have found a true and faithful wife. I have found a loyal wife. I want to go further. Lara is the epitome of loyalty. But she's nobody's doormat. <laughs> I want to say she is so supportive of me in my ministry. She is so, so supportive of this church. She's so, so supportive of you, and uh, if she sent you out an email recently and you haven't got back to her, ladies, you need to, but she will challenge you if you violate integrity. And I need to say that when she challenges you, you are left in no doubt that you have been challenged. How do I know that? <laughs> How do I know that? Because I think she may have challenged me once or twice, right? But her loyalty to me and to this church means that favor and approval flow from God to me and to this church. And so Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day came and yeah, I bought her some stuff. And, and I was thinking, men and women, you can marry up or marry down. Or you can not know which one you did, but you can work on it and make it that you're married up. Those of you who are not yet married and you're thinking about it, marry up. And whoever you marry, honor the one that you marry and be loyal. Opportunity comes to loyal people. Loyalty makes you look good. Uh, the proverb said it makes you attractive. When I say opportunity comes your way because of your loyalty, I, I, I don't want you to misunderstand the word opportunity for opportunistic. They're two different things. Opportunistic means you're going to do anything to get your way. You're going to sacrifice integrity. Uh, you'll even sacrifice loyalty. Uh, you'll be disloyal to get your own way. Uh, for, 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 for You're going to do your own thing, you know at the expense of the one to whom you should be loyal, and the, and the organization, the church, the group that you should be loyal to, you'll, you'll forsake that. When it comes to church and ministry, those of you who are in the, those of us in the payroll, those of, we, we, it's not just a job. We get paid. It's a calling. I, I want those of us who volunteer, those of you who volunteer, those of us who volunteer, when we volunteer, 
It's just not a rostered thing. It's, it's a calling. And if you are kind of opportunistic about it, rather than say, I've got an opportunity, and you do it to get strokes or get somewhere, you, you, after a while you're going to get bored with it. And I'm talking about rosters for Sundays, rosters for midweek, uh, those your host connect groups in your houses. If, if, if you don't see it as a call from God, after a while you're going to get cranky about it. You go, I, I don't want to do this anymore. But when it's a call from God, you're going to stay loyal for the long haul. You do it out of wrong motivation, you'll get tired of doing it. You just will. It's, it's a matter of loyalty to the cause of Christ, to his church, and to those whom he has appointed as leaders and overseers. Disloyalty is self-serving, uh, self-justified, and opportunistic. A couple more and we're done. Proverbs 20, verse 6, in your NLT. Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? Remember Hosea 6 4, you know the fog last Friday? The Amplified, your wavering loyalty. You're wavery. I think it should be wavering. You're wavery. Wavery. Everyone's waving. Your wavering loyalty and kindness are transient, like the morning cloud and the dew that goes away early. It, 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 it starts out looking good, but never lasts at the distance. Church, I, I just want to say that let's be a culture of loyalty. Some of the early empire leaders, non-Christian, in the early days of the church, I didn't particularly like the Christians, but they, they said this. I, they're crazy people. Some of their beliefs are just wacko, they said. But see how they love one another. Let, let's, 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 let's be a culture of loyalty. Disloyalty scatters people. Always does. Let's, let's be loyal in our conversation uh, about people in this church, about our actions. Judges 8, 33, 35 in your NLT, uh, uh, in the morning. Mm, that's not the one I'm after. Uh, there's something wrong there, but I'm going to tell you. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshipping the images of Baal, making Baal berate their God. They forgot the Lord their God who had rescued them from all their enemies surrounding them. Nor did they show any loyalty to the family of Gideon, despite all the good he had done. And the rest of chapter 8 and chapter 9 in Judges shows that the people of Israel scattered. Disloyalty causes scattering. One more thing. Past negative loyalties. Someone and something you probably shouldn't have been loyal to, will drag you down because they built on the wrong foundation. Build loyalty on the right foundation, a Christ-like foundation. You cannot be a friend to everyone. That would be fairly flimsy. So choose wisely. Proverbs 18, 24 in the Amplified. A man of too many friends, chosen indiscriminately, didn't think too much about it, will be broken in pieces and come to ruin. But there is a true loving friend who is reliable and loyal and sticks closer than a brother. Sometimes you need to go to make personal choices, you know, uh, which will mean deciding what you stand for. The old saying is, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for Anything. Well, I, I'm going to. I'm going to say this: If you decide to stand for the person and the things that you, if you do not decide to stand for the person and the things you should be loyal to, you will fall for anyone, and you'll listen to their stuff. Too many friends. The proverb says, "Too many friends chosen indiscriminately." I want to leave you with this friend, all right, and loyalty. What about this friend? True, loving, reliable, who will never let you down. His name is Jesus. Loyalty is loyalty is loyalty. And this morning I'm going to call upon you 
to make a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay loyal to him. He will never let you down. Stay loyal to him. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, as we explore this issue of loyalty, that we'll be those people. We'll make it part of our culture. We will be the culture of loyalty. Thank you, Lord God. Pray for anyone here this morning, Father, and they're dealing with issues in their lives that cause their life not to run as smoothly as it might. When they think about the abundance of which we have just briefly spoken, they think, well, I, I, I would like to have some of that. But Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your promise. You said, I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And so this morning, Holy Spirit, draw us closer to yourself, cause us to make that commitment to you that you know that we need to make through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, people. Let's stand on our feet. Hey, as we're standing, as we've got a song to sing momentarily. Uh, if you want to, if you're wanting prayer this morning, you know you've come along here, you say, I, I'd, love, I'd love some prayer in this service. Come and stand up the front as we sing this song. You say, hey, I think I would like to make that commitment to Christ in a way that I never have before and commit my loyalty to him. I want to surrender to him. Come and stand in the front this morning in Jesus' name. Let's sing our song together. Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank you for freedom, Father God. Thank you for peace. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your loyalty to us. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace on us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of things before we leave. Mr. Jack Austin is right now in the foyer. He's sitting behind that black table just waiting to see men come out and pay their four bucks and sign up for that men's event, right? And uh, in your cafe, uh, the barista's in there already. He's making coffee, right? Uh, Raisin Toast is for free at three points in your cafe. And if you met someone this morning brand new, would you take them and buy them a coffee and get them Raisin Toast? Would you help them out like that? That would bless them. That would be really, really good to do that. Hey, hope you can come back tonight. We've got a great service here, 6 o'clock tonight. And we're starting a theme called Turning Anxiety into Peace and Well-Being. I know that you want peace and well-being and not the anxiety, but boy, there's a lot of anxiety around. Let's deal with that tonight. Have a fantastic day. Stay around for, for the raisin toast and the coffee, and I'll come and chat to you shortly in Jesus' name. Be blessed.